Hello and welcome to my channel, Vice Rhino here. Today I'm looking at another video from World Video Bible School, the gift that keeps on giving. In this video they talk about how the earth might look old to some people, but old in comparison to what? Also apparently there will be something about miracles. And just a quick reminder that the fundraiser for Project Share is still going on, so if you've got a couple extra bucks this month consider helping out. Let's go! To many people, the Earth looks extremely old. That might have something to do with the fact that it is extremely old. Well, I mean, I guess that depends on how you define extremely, but if we're just talking older than our human brains can adequately conceptualize, then yes, it is extremely old. Not thousands of years old, but billions of years old. I mean, yeah. It's hard to have a rudimentary understanding of the rock cycle and still come to the conclusion that the Earth is only thousands of years old. When these individuals hear a creationist like myself talk about a young Earth that's thousands of years old, they wonder how someone could believe such. Yeah. Even when I was a creationist, I never actually formulated any beliefs regarding the age of the Earth. This stemmed from the fact that I developed an interest in astronomy before I self-fundamentalized into creationism, and because I learned about astronomy first, I knew that the universe had to be at least old enough to allow the light from distant stars to reach us, otherwise we wouldn't be able to see the distant stars. And the creationist arguments regarding this never really sat well with me. So while I would deny evolution and agree that God created us specially some six to ten thousand years ago, I never came to a firm conclusion about the age of the Earth, instead preferring to just not think about it. But when I did accidentally think about it, it usually ended up being incredulity at people like Ken Ham believing that God created stars in such a way that they sometimes would have been created as a supernova, but with light already in transit from before they went nova, showing them as being a star. The first recorded instance of a supernova was in 185 CE. That particular supernova, creatively named SN185, is over 9,000 light years away. The Earth was supposed to have been about 4,000 years old when it was observed, so a star somehow blew up 5,000 years before the beginning of the universe. The latest one is SN 2014J, which, as you might have guessed from these super creative names, was observed in 2014. That one is 12 million light years away, so it also exploded before the universe began, before it was even created, it exploded. So yeah, my point is that even as a creationist, I couldn't see how people could believe in a young Earth. I never quite made the jump to old Earth creationism, but at least I didn't jump on board with the young Earth. How could anyone look at Earth and think it was created less than 10,000 years ago? First, even if people didn't always have old Earth impressions, the man-made theory of evolution demands such an interpretation of our planet else the entire theory of evolution would have to be abandoned. I mean, yes, evolution does take time, but our discovery of the fact that enough time has passed for evolution to have occurred was made before Darwin was even born. It's not like he came up with evolution and then deep time sprung up as a concept to bolster the theory which we had already decided should replace creationism. Now the fact is, evolution should be abandoned anyway since it's impossible, whether the Earth is young or old. Oh, well, since you said it so confidently, it must be true. Guess I'll abandon it then. So, what's your theory that accounts for how the 16,000 or so species that represented on the Ark turned into the millions of species that we have today if evolution is impossible? Because usually that one is solved with an appeal to evolution, with the caveat that it's only microevolution, which is literally impossible since microevolution is defined as evolution below the species level, so you can't have an increase in the total number of species with just microevolution, by definition. What's more, many dating methods exist that point to a young Earth. Usually when a creationist says dating method and claims it points to a young Earth, what they're referring to is when they find something that is less than 6,000 years old, often when dated with conventional dating methods. Either that, or they mean that when they assume something, like the recession rate of the moon, has been happening at a constant rate for the entirety of the Earth's history, and based on that, usually incorrect, assumption, the Earth can't be older than X, with X being a number that is usually greater than 6,000 years, but less than 1 billion years. In other words, not actual dating methods. They just get ignored by most people. And rightly so. 
An actual dating method can only say how old a thing is and has no impact on the age of anything else aside from that one thing. So if you find a coral reef that is 4,000 years old, that doesn't mean that all coral reefs were wiped out in the Great Flood 4,000 years ago. That just means you found a 4,000-year-old coral reef. Good for you, Gold Star. So, given that we know that a 4,000-year-old coral reef exists, and we also know that 4.4 billion-year-old zircon crystals exist, the Earth must therefore be at least 4.4 billion years old. The reef turns out to be entirely irrelevant when it comes to the age of the planet. But in this video, he doesn't actually mention any of these dating methods, he just implies that creationists have dating methods that show a young Earth, and wants you to trust him on that. No doubt, since evolutionary theory demands an old Earth, it should come as no surprise that many people can't help but see the Earth as being billions of years old. Well, as I pointed out earlier, the evidence for an old Earth is so compelling that I could never quite bring myself to deny it, even as an evolution-denying creationist. So it's not so much that evolution demands an old Earth, therefore the Earth is old, it's that the Earth is old, therefore there was enough time for evolution to happen. But define old. How does anyone actually know what a billion-year-old Earth looks like? Well, we know the Earth is at least a billion years old because of various dating methods. We can also reconstruct the geologic history of the Earth by examining the rock layers, and absent any radiometric methods, we can calculate approximately how long it would have taken all those layers to form. And it's more than a billion years. So an Earth that is at least a billion years old looks like the Earth that we live on. Older humans can be identified accurately as old because their actual birth dates can be known. That is, people witnessed their births and gave them birth certificates. So, how do we determine the age of someone without a birth certificate? Well, for starters, we can look at them. Do they look old? This can give us a good preliminary estimate, but looks can be deceiving. We could take x-rays and examine the skeleton. The skull changes as we age, and the joints on the skull become smaller as we get older, so that can give you a decent estimate as well. You can also check for bone density. Older people tend to have less dense bones. Ossification is another indicator. Some of our bones fuse together as we age, and measuring this can give us a pretty accurate estimate. So really, if we want to figure out the age of a person and they don't have a birth certificate, we look at the evidence that can be found in that person's body to determine their age. A person's age might also be reasonably estimated because their appearance can be compared to both older and younger people. So what, are you saying that first we need to find a planet that's older than the Earth, and then one that is younger, and only then can we estimate their ages? The same thing can be said for animals and plants. I mean, maybe sometimes, but definitely not all the time. Here is a 100-year-old oak tree. Here is a 300-year-old oak tree. Just by looking at them, I personally would guess that the 100-year-old tree is the older of the two, though admittedly that's probably got something to do with the Spanish moss giving it the false appearance of age, but that's kind of my point here. Just looking at something and guessing is not a good way to figure out anything's real age. For trees, you could take a sample and count the rings. Oak trees are usually pretty accurate for dendrochronological purposes. People can know exactly when various animals were born or when a tree was planted, but what about the Earth as a whole? Well, we know it's about 4.54 billion years old with an error range of 50 million years. So we can't know it anywhere near as accurately as we can figure out the age of a tree or animal. After all, 50 million years is a few orders of magnitude longer than the entire existence of human civilization. But in the grand scheme of things, it's pretty damn near accurate. And we probably never will be able to pin it down more narrowly than that for the simple reason that it's entirely possible that 50 million years is just how long it took the solar system to form, including the Earth. So when dating material from the beginnings of the solar system, there will be a potential age range of 50 million years. No one was alive when this or any other planet was born. Why would they need to be? We don't figure out how old trees are by looking for human records of when that tree was first planted or discovered. We do it by studying the tree itself. Why would it be any different for determining the age of a planet? No one was present on Earth to see the first rock formed, hill raised, or canyon created. Were you there is literally a nonsensical argument that seems to be a thought-stopping technique akin to those used by cults to stop people from questioning the leader. Don't like the plethora of evidence that points to an old Earth? No need to consider the merits of the evidence, just ask, were you there, and be done with it. 
How can anyone reasonably say the Earth looks billions of years old? Because, as you yourself pointed out at the beginning of the video, the Earth looks billions of years old. Old compared to what? Okay, nice little word game there. Yes, old is a relative term. A cat is old when it's 15 years old. A human of the same age is just a child that can't even be trusted with the responsibility of driving yet. So in that sense, yes, old is relative and based on comparison. But when we're talking about the age of the Earth, it's not some nebulous old in the same sense that we would call a 97-year-old person old and a 22-year-old person young. It's old in that we have measured it having existed for about the same amount of time as our orbit takes times 4.4 billion. So I guess if you really want it to be relative, old compared to how long it takes for the Earth to complete one solar orbit. People who contend that the Earth appears billions of years old must also discount the very real possibility that one or more great catastrophes could have occurred in the past to drastically change the appearance of the Earth. Quite the contrary, we know of a number of such catastrophes. We just don't blindly accept the one that you want to have happened because there is literally no evidence for it and a plethora of evidence against it. Earthquakes, volcanoes, and local floods radically alter the looks of certain places on Earth. Yeah, and we can see evidence of such events in the geologic record going back billions of years. How does that help your case? Consider how a tree that has been struck by lightning or damaged during a flood might appear much older than it is. Are you trying to suggest that flood damage or lightning strikes can change the number of rings in a tree? Or can change its carbon-14 content? Or are you just saying that weathered things look old, and sometimes things can become weathered quickly, therefore the Earth is just weathered to appear older than it is? Because that is demonstrably not true. Newly formed igneous rocks from volcanoes often appear old though they're new. They only appear old when cherry-picking your data. There are several papers out there that the authors have set out to date inclusions in the newly formed rocks for various reasons, and the inclusions in the rocks are necessarily older than the rock itself. Creationists love to take these papers and ignore the fact that they are talking about inclusions, and then present them as though they are dating the newly formed rocks themselves. If you have to misrepresent the data in order to make it agree with you, then can you really claim the high ground here? In truth, Christians rightly interpret the earth based upon the fact that only a few thousand years ago, God supernaturally altered the earth's appearance forever by causing all the fountains of the great deep to break up and the windows of heaven to open, bringing rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. Translation? If it looks older than I believe it is based on this book of ancient Hebrew mythology, then it was magic. Okay, fine, you're welcome to believe that your god is so deceptive that he would do this in a way that would make the earth appear significantly older than it actually is, if you like, but that whole supernatural qualifier firmly removes this hypothesis from the scientific realm, and so this hypothesis should most definitely be left out of any scientific discussion, classroom or otherwise. Now, go back and look at your YouTube channel and watch the video where Kyle Butt complains about discrimination in scientific publications, where they refuse to publish creationist papers. Do you think that this appeal to the supernatural might have something to do with that? If you need to completely destroy the laws of physics in order for your hypothesis to work, and you don't have any evidence for such a breakdown of physics, then the journals are right to reject you. Most of the oil, coal beds, and fossil graveyards in the Earth which many contend are evidence of an old earth, can be, and have been, rationally explained as a result of the worldwide flood of Noah's day. Yeah, and usually these explanations are appeals to the fact that it is possible to artificially produce coal and oil relatively quickly. Which is true, but in oil's case, the hydrocarbon chains have different lengths than naturally occurring oil, betraying the different processes that were used to form them, not to mention all the geology surrounding oil deposits that require old ages in order to work, and for coal, regardless of how quickly it can form, it is usually found deposited in terrestrial river floodplains, with signs of terrestrial environments all through them, such as river channels, levees, soil horizons, fossil plant roots, and even the creationist favorite upright fossil trees complete with roots indicating that they died where they grew. So, sure, coal can form quickly in the right circumstances, but the environments that the coal beds are putting on display cannot. In short, even if it could be proven that the Earth looks very old, 
evolutionists cannot rationally deny that such apparent age could be the result of one or more great catastrophes. Yes, we can. All of the supposed evidence for these great catastrophes have adequate naturalistic explanations if the Earth is old, but they require severe misrepresentation in order to look like maybe it could have been magic. So yes, we can rationally deny the flood model as the explanation for the Earth's apparent age. Will he find some evidence that doesn't rely on misrepresentation in order to make it look like it could have been magic if you look at it sideways? To find out, tune in tomorrow, same Rhino time, same Rhino channel.